The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. I'm just starting a webinar. Do you want me? No, I, I couldn't hear you, so I wanted to make sure you knew the sound was off, but I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, folks. Um, somebody ringing to tell me that the sound was, uh, uh, was not good. Let me just uh, uh, check that. It sounds uh, pretty good here. Um, I've got uh, uh, full audio here. Everybody, can you all hear me all right there? Somebody can uh, uh, type an answer in the, the question box. No sound. Okay, that was uh, my friend Mr. Regan. Hello, mate. How are you? Sounds good. Okay, sounds all right now. Um, we have had issues. Thank you very much, folks. I've got quite a few responses now saying, yes, the sounds good. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I've had, uh, we've had uh, uh, sort of... Um, uh, issues with this uh, question of is the heavy are you getting sound or not uh, but um, uh, I can assure you it's all right here and we are recording this I'm 6,000 miles away from some of you and uh, uh, internet connections are uh, generally I find not uh, not everything they cracked up to be so uh, if you do have a temporary loss of sound uh, don't worry about it it's not at my end uh, and we are uh, recording all of this, so uh, you'll be all right. Let's move on and get started. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about the fourth seal, and I'm also going to talk to you about contract rollover. <clears throat> uh, this thing, the fourth seal, you'll see that in the um, uh, in the um, uh, promo for the uh, webinar, such as it is, uh, I've called it Miracle Forecasting of Future Turns in Major Markets, uh, which is a very, very ambitious statement, uh, and uh, I'm really not uh, a promoter of any um, uh, kind. Um, I'm pretty conservative in my view of life and I'm even more conservative in my view of markets and, and uh, I'm pretty sceptical about the claims that uh, people make, um, as I'm sure most of you are too. But I wanted to uh, show you uh, the definitive proof of the fourth seal um, and um, then we'll work down through that uh, and show you the various time cycles uh, and phases that it works on. Uh, what uh, uh, I wanted to uh, have this webinar for particularly is we've had the fourth seal available for a, a number of months now, uh, but we've had it with uh, all of the uh, markets that we're covering uh, in one lot, and uh, it's been very expensive or relatively expensive. Some of you have subscribed to it, for which I thank you. You've certainly had the benefit of it. It, it is a miracle tool. Um, and uh, we have uh, now been able to uh, get the website functioning to break down the uh, fourth seal charts, time and price cycles, uh, into individual markets. So um, you'll be able to uh, subscribe to it uh, from now on um, by individual markets. You can see here we're going to have we've got the DAX, the S&P, crude, natural gas 
copper, T-bond, DX and gold, uh, and we might uh, add some others uh, as we progress. Uh, and Terry's asked me to uh, make sure that I showed you uh, the services page, uh, which should be coming up on your screens now, <coughs> excuse me, and you should be able to see from that um, that um, we have this new uh, column over here, uh, Daniel Code Forecasting Individual Market, um, and that's going to be um, $125 uh, for each market, uh, and you can pick uh, just one or two that you're interested in, uh, or more, or you can have um, the lot of them uh, for 800 a month. Uh, so uh, for those of you who are interested in subscribing for individual markets, or all of them, uh, please contact Terry uh, at support at the uh, If you forget that, you can just uh, click on the uh, contact us link here uh, on the Daniel Code website, uh, and this is the guy you want, Terry <coughs> at um, support at the Daniel Code uh, .com. Okay, so um, the first thing uh, that I need to tell you is that. Uh, markets are time shifters. You've probably heard of shape shifters. If you've uh, got children who watch uh, horror videos, you certainly have. <laughs> uh, and what markets are uh, is they are time shifters. That is that they morph between various periods of time. Um, and uh, I suspect that uh, very few of you uh, look at a long enough uh, view of time Time is the most important thing in markets. Time is more important than price. Um, and uh, as it, and momentum, indeed, is more important than price. But time is the little understood uh, part of uh, trading. Uh, now, I've laid this all out um, in some detail over the years. Um, and I'm not sure that any of you or most of you have really got on top of this issue. Uh, but if you go to the Daniel Code website, um, and you click on the Articles tab, uh, you will see there's about uh, 80 or 90 uh, articles that I've had published, um, and some of them are really, really important for you. Um, the first one is this one, which is uh, dated the 31st of August uh, 2009, and that's actually a, a, an almost a two-hour audio, and it's called Live at the Springs, um, and it's a recording of me speaking about where the Daniel Code comes from and how we get these numbers uh, that we use that you will see rule all markets in all time frames. Um, and if you'd like to listen to that, uh, you will, you will, uh, I set out for you as clearly as is possible where these markets come from, what, what's the math behind all of these uh, numbers that we use, uh, and the ratio so you can see the uh, purely mathematical basis of it now. Uh, all of this stuff, the Daniel Code, uh, comes from the Bible, and that freaks a lot of people out. Um, in fact, uh, one of the uh, websites that I have historically written for uh, has had a uh, got a new editorial team in there, and I wrote an article for them a few weeks ago, and they said, oh, I'm not sure if we can publish this because you're talking about the Bible and you're talking about God, um, and there's not a big uh, market for that. Well, <clears throat> there should be, um, and uh, let me tell you that. It doesn't matter a, uh, a toss to me whether you uh, are a Christian, um, uh, uh, follow Islam, uh, Jewish, uh, or a Calathumpian. Uh, and it matters even less to me whether you believe in God or don't believe in God. But uh, if you listen to this Live at the Springs audio, you will see that all of these Daniel Code ratios are purely mathematical, uh, and they all come uh, from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. Uh, so, you know, uh, there may not be a great market to hear about uh, God and the Bible, but uh, if for the sake of your financial health, you should uh, be taking the view that this uh, Daniel Code rules all things in life. It's the universal ratio of or everything in life. Uh, and you should uh, at least be aware of it and uh, listen to how it uh, comes. And it really doesn't matter to me whether you believe in the Bible or not. The fact is that... Uh, uh, it will um, it will uh, guide your life, it will rule your life anyway, whether you like it or not. Uh, so have a listen to that if you are serious about knowing where this Daniel Code stuff comes from. Uh, and then we're going to be talking a lot today about time frame, because time is more important uh, than price. And if you just scroll down there, you'll see 
Uh, there are two articles here. One is called Masterclass, It's About Time, uh, and the other one is called Masterclass 2, Time in Gold. Uh, and you will need to probably print those out to read them. They are very complex. Um, they're quite long, and uh, they take a good deal of uh, reading through to understand uh, how these uh, time frames work. But they are the, uh, they are the basis that, that uh, creates everything that I'm going to show you. Um, and it's all transparent, it's all open, it's all there. You just have to take the time to read it. Uh, some people have read those articles uh, half a dozen times. So uh, let's start with the most simple stuff that I can show you uh, because I want to impress on you uh, how important, how dynamic, and how amazing and miraculous uh, these Daniel Code time cycles are. Uh, and when we're talking about the fourth seal, we're talking about a combination of time and price. So if you just look at this chart that's on the screen now, it's just an absolute standard 24-day chart of the S&P index. The dollar sign uh, in front of SPX tells you this is the index. Uh, and um, it's uh, the, the third time period, the longest time period that we look at. Uh, if you've read those, when you've read those articles, uh, masterclass articles, you'll understand why uh, our basic timing chart is a six-day chart. Uh, and uh, then because uh, it says that uh, our commands are that it shall be for time, times and and half, uh, we use that to say, well, uh, time is a six-day chart, so times would be 12 and then 24. Uh, there are all sorts of sub-times inside that, but you don't need to worry about them. Uh, so let's start you off by just looking at a absolutely standard um, chart from uh, Trade Navigator, uh, so just a standard high-low close chart, uh, and there's nothing on it. So this is the dot-com high uh, back here in 2000. Um, this uh, big bar with the reversal here, this is the 9-11 um, uh, sort of crash low. It may not look at now, but it was at the time. Uh, then we got into the, uh, the gold span low when he really decided to rank things up. Uh, and then we got up, this is the 2007 high, uh, this is the March 2009 low, which uh, we called here at the Daniel Code to the tick and a couple of, uh, well, to the day and a few ticks. And now, look, we're all the way up here uh, making new highs. Uh, so let's uh, just start by adding some things to this chart. Um, Let's use this uh, to uh, reveal some uh, annotations for you. Um, and let's go back a bit and let me show you how this stuff's created. <coughs> uh, the, I have done webinars before on uh, use of these uh, Daniel Code trading channels. All of this stuff is on the website, folks. You know, I, I have a lot of people say, oh, gosh, you've got so much stuff on your website. Well, I have, and it's all important. And uh, they say, well, where do we start? We'll start at the beginning and end at the end. Um, you need to put in the time to learn all of the stuff that's in the articles uh, and in the videos. Um, I can tell you that I'm a lawyer and that uh, getting this stuff to the level uh, that I'm going to show you <coughs> excuse me, is considerably tougher than a law degree, uh, which would take you five years. So, you know, if you have to put in five or six months to really get to understand this stuff, I can assure you um, uh, it is very, very rewarding. Um, so what you're seeing now is this uh, blue uh, lines up here. This is a Daniel Code trading channel. Um, it has some very specific rules about how you create them. Uh, and if you don't know how to create them, you can't see the trend change <coughs> at the end of them. Uh, but it uh, basically uses the regression tool, regression channel tool, uh, with some set rules. If you simply use a regression channel, it will go on and fit itself to any market and tells you nothing. Uh, this tells you a great deal, uh, and there are videos and webinars which I've done on this, uh, and you will, if you uh, go to the videos tab uh, here at this website, uh, you can go through those. It will tell you exactly how to create these uh, Daniel Code trading channels. Uh, and to start with, the first thing you can notice is uh, this is a um, this, this uh, trading channel starts uh, from the April 1994 low. Now, uh, don't say that's old hat and run away. Uh, just uh, fill up your scotch glass and pay attention because you're going to be amazed. 
Um, and if we put on that, uh, that was a very significant low at the time. It doesn't look at now because the increase in the bar size uh, has just swamped it, but that was a, a very significant low. And we've started that trading channel from that low. So up it goes, uh, and you can see a number of things. You can see all of these lows uh, from 1994 uh, up until the uh, dot-com high in 2000 uh, have, cl have uh, broken through uh, the bottom line of the three lines. The thicker line in the middle is the mean or median. Uh, the line above is one standard deviation above it, uh, and the line below is one standard deviation below it. Um, and they're not your normal mathematical standard deviations. They're Daniel Code standard deviations. Uh, so these, these lows here, uh, here's uh, uh, July 1996. Uh, this is April 1997. Uh, this next one is um, uh, November 1997. Uh, this biggie here is uh, uh, September 1998. Uh, you'll see that they've all broken through the bottom of that uh, one standard deviation, and that makes them important to us as places to start the time count. Um, shift if you're counting. Um, Shift usually makes a, a book on how many times the uh, lighter goes off <coughs> during these webinars. That was number two, mate, if you missed the start. And thanks for uh, Thursday night. I had a great evening with uh, with our friend Shift. Most of you know him. I met him at tutorials. Uh, we uh, He took me to the uh, cargo bar in Sydney. Uh, I was down, been down in Sydney for a couple of days, end of the financial year. have to go and see the accountants. And uh, Shift and I went out and uh, had a... Uh, um, a decent little drink uh, at the cargo bar down uh, on the wharf at Darling Harbour. Absolutely magnificent what, uh, what they've done to uh, make that a very, very attractive area. And then we went and had a nice uh, curry dinner afterwards. We had a great time. Uh, so, uh, Shif, thanks for that. I enjoyed your company, mate, uh, as I always do. Okay, so back to the work. You can see that one, two, three, four of these loads um, have broken convincingly through the uh, one standard deviation on the low side. Um, and uh, don't forget that everything that I teach you about the daily charts applies to the 6-day, 12-day, 24, and that is that uh, these turns uh, can be valid for price recognition and time recognition either on the bar high low or on the close. Uh, and you'll see here we have a lower low here, uh, which is 11 uh, but the closing low is the bar before. One is the momentum low, uh, the other one, the later one, is the chart low. Um, and I put these on to show you uh, what we can do with them. So let's uh, move on now. You can see what those uh, points are there, uh, and you understand how I've got them. Uh, so we can take up our trading channel, uh, and we can start now with our time counts. Now, uh, the time counts that we use are all Daniel Code ratios, the dominant ones are 44, uh, which is the timing cycle for gold, uh, 59, which is the Daniel Code cycle that traditionally gives you tops, uh, but occasionally it can switch and give you bottoms as well, uh, and 62 is the most common uh, support cycle that gives you lows. Uh, there are other ones. If you uh, go back through uh, the long-term trend charts, uh, you'll see where we use 70, which is the heathen cycle. Um, it is a cycle that doesn't conform to the rest of the uh, rules, but it's very dominant in the euro. Uh, so let's just start here because I want to get this moved along um, and uh, show you what uh, is possible. We have here, uh, for those of you who have it, uh, the Daniel Code time cycle, and it's a little picture of our hedgehog Dan, uh, and it looks like he's behind bars, but he's not. He's... Uh, uh, just sitting there happily, and those little uh, lines are supposed to show you that uh, there are time cycles there, which is which is an easy way of doing it. Um, it's not that's the shorthand way of doing it. Uh, so if you click on that, um, you can just click on any of these uh, major points that I've ident identified for you. But uh, it doesn't uh, go on to give you the half. Remember, uh, our rules say that these time cycles uh, it shall be for time, times, and and half. Uh, so once we put these time cycles on, uh, we need to extend them by the times and an half. Uh, so let's start with this first one here. Uh, here was our first low that we identified uh, that came out of the um, uh, that the, this low. This is way back in 1996, folks. 
Uh, so we put on our 59 time cycle here, uh, which is in black. Um, uh, I invented this stuff, so I guess I get to choose the colors. Um, and the 59 is always in black. The 44 is in red, uh, and the 62 is in blue. Um, and there's a reason why we don't use many different colors, basically because I'm colorblind, uh, or I'm actually a dichromat. I can't tell the difference between uh, red and green very well, uh, which is the same for 25% of the male population. Uh, but look what happens. Here's our 59 cycle running along. Uh, it gave us this counter trend high here. Most importantly, look where it is now. Uh, it, 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 so 59 is time. Uh, this is times and a half. This is two times, two times and a half, three times. And this goes on and on to infinity. Uh, and some of these cycles have been running. Uh, for years and years and years. This cycle, as I just told you, uh, started in 1996. In fact, uh, you can go back to about 1932 for the start of some of these cycles. They're quite extraordinary. Um, and look what it's done. Apart from anything else, to bring you up to the date, it's giving you um, a time cycle expiring right here, where we are now, last month. Uh, so there's that 59 dominant time cycle still running through the chart uh, and its last iteration expired uh, in the 24 trading days to June the 12th. Uh, so we think that's pretty amazing. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, and you can do this yourself uh, to make you quite aware that I'm not uh, inventing this stuff. Um, that uh, Live at the Springs audio was done uh, many years ago uh, and... Um, Let's uh, just put on our next time cycle. This is a 62 time cycle, um, and it should be in blue. Uh, so we can change it to blue, uh, and you can see what happens here. Look, this is the 62. I could change all of these to blue. Uh, let me show you. It's quite simple. Uh, you just click on these uh, drop-down uh, boxes, and um, you can change them to blue uh, or any other color you like. Uh, the main one I wanted to show you uh, was uh, this one here, uh, which uh, ended uh, on the, uh, the the 24-day period ending the 25th of February. Now, that's actually the momentum low of the 2009 low. Uh, it's not the chart low. The bar after it is the chart low, but that's the bar with the closing low on it. Remember what I just told you a few minutes ago? This stuff is valid. Uh, on the close, on a close-only basis, or on the bar high low. Uh, so there's your momentum low there, which it's uh, given us. And then the 62 is the uh, supporting uh, cycle that tends to give you low. So that was pretty interesting. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, here was our next uh, mark that we identified to start our count from. Um, and we can pop in here before it gets too crowded, um, a 59 cycle. Um, and that uh, gives us that low right there. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can drag this up for you. There's the low, 59. Okay, there's 59. You've now got a 59 on the momentum low in March 2009, and you've got a 62 for support on the momentum low in 2009. Uh, let's move on. Our next one, I put it in red uh, just to show you that it's going to be uh, a 44, uh, and that's the cycle. Uh, of gold. Um, that's the number for gold is 44. You read that article, Time in Gold, uh, you'll see why. So this one, uh, when you put it on, uh, should be in red. Um, and they all should be in red. So 44 from there uh, was uh, not too bad. Uh, but look what it did over here. This is, this is part of it. It's given us the bar after the momentum low. We've had two on the momentum low. Uh, and now let me get my cursor right. There, uh, this 44 has given us um, that uh, uh, the, mo the, the not the momentum low, the chart low uh, in 2009. So we've now got one, two, three, four time cycles uh, that gave us that low. And look where its latest one is. It's given us the high uh, of of the present move, uh, and we've now got two two time cycles on there. We've got a 59. And a 44. This should actually be um, in red. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is, but we'll find out as we go along. Uh, it's not that one. Uh, 
uh, or that one. We need to go further on. There's that 110 cycle. See that uh, right at the low, uh, which is how I was able to, uh, one of the ways I was able to forecast that low. And you can do this too. Uh, folks, look what it gave us next. There's the high. There's the rally high. Uh, that's the uh, May 2011 high uh, for that move. Um, and there's uh, its latest iteration. Iteration, incidentally, uh, for the uh, people who wrote to me said, I don't know what you're talking about. Iteration just means a current. Uh, this is the, uh, we can actually switch this on uh, and it will give you the number uh, in here if we show the values. Uh, this is two and a half times uh, the 44 cycle because it is for time, times and and half. Uh, so you can see these running along here. Uh, this was uh, one and a half times, uh, gave us the uh, exact low uh, in March 2009. We knew about that time cycle coming up uh, months and months before um, uh, it uh, occurred. Uh, then its next iteration gave us <laughs> uh, the May 2011 high and look what it's telling us now. We now have three different time cycles, uh, all giving us this um, uh, major high that we've just had and suggesting that it is going to be a major high. Uh, so let's uh, move on here. Uh, and then uh, there was our 2000. There's the dot-com top. Uh, and uh, the places that we uh, look to start these um, time cycles from, highs or lows that are outside the um, uh, one standard deviation uh, and the high after the high and the low after the low uh, is often a very important point. Uh, so if we can uh, run our 59 cycle along there, uh, you'll see that um, uh, it uh, has given us this um, uh, momentum low in here. Uh, and uh, there's another one giving us the momentum low in the 2009 low. So we've now got one, two, three, four cycles there at the 2000 line low, uh, either on the chart uh, low or the momentum low. Um, let me uh, clear this stuff up so you understand it's getting a bit uh, messy. Uh, I'll get rid of some of this stuff now that you've seen it. Uh, but just let's have a look what happens. Um, uh, this was a 59 down here to make the low. And here's the last one I want you to look at. Uh, and this is the 2007 top. Now, I've started with this chart because I can show you very easily um, the uh, importance of um, uh, these points. So here we are. This is the high. There's your 59. Absolutely spot on. This was a 59 down here. All of these important turns. Uh, this was a 59. All of these important turns uh, in the time cycles have been 59. Now, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, when we get down to the smaller charts, I know it's hard for a lot of you to understand it, and you say... You know, which one did you choose? Why did you choose it? I've started with the 24-day chart because I wanted to show you uh, the validity of this, uh, these time cycles, which are not known to anyone else. Um, and uh, it's quite extraordinary. Um, and there's your 59 cycle uh, into the recent high that we've just had. So historically, by going back and looking at these charts, it tells us a great deal. And it tells it to us weeks, months, and sometimes years in advance. Uh, there's the 2007 high forecasting uh, probably an important top, probably a very important top. Uh, I guess we're going to get at least um, a decent correction out of this because this cycle, uh, 2007, uh, six years later, um, and it's forecasted uh, to be prepared for it at least uh, six years in advance. And I think all that's quite extraordinary. Um, so let's go from there. I wanted to show you that. Uh, you could equally well use this little tool down here, Daniel Code in his cage. Um, and if you click on that, uh, you'll see that it gives you um, the basic Daniel Code time signals, 44, 59, uh, 62, and 70. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you the times and and half. Uh, for that, you need to use uh, this tool down here, uh, which on Trade Navigator is called the Fibonacci time ratios, uh, which is uh, of uh, interest if you're interested in the uh, population growth of rabbits, but it's actually got nothing to do uh, with markets because markets are uh, controlled by the Daniel Code ratios. And one or two of the Daniel Code ratios are quite close to some of the Fibonacci numbers. So 
uh, 61.8 is a FIB um, and 62.5 is the Daniel Code closest number, but the other numbers are nowhere near them. So uh, nobody apart from the Daniel Code ever said that 59 was an important market in um, a timing. Nobody very much understands this stuff except you guys who are interested in it. Uh, but there you are. That's how that's how it worked. And I wanted to start with our longest chart because I can show you the um, indisputable major turns. Um, and don't forget, of course, uh, on the six-day chart, uh, because this is a time shifter from the 2007 high to the 2009 low, I'm going to show you was 59 DC weeks. The DC week is six trading days. And you'll also see when you get the six-day chart that from the 2007 high to this high we've just had or in the process of having is exactly uh, four Daniel Code 59 cycles from the 2009 low and exactly five DC 59 cycles from the 2007 high. Uh, and if you don't believe me, uh, try it yourself. Uh, and uh, it's absolutely extraordinary stuff as I'm going to show you uh, right now. Just let me see what's happening here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's move now from the uh, 24. We've got a, a ton of stuff to do here, and we've already spent half an hour. Um, let's move now to the 12-day chart. This is the 12-day chart, uh, and these red lines on it are the fourth seal lines. Um, and there's some <coughs> pretty interesting stuff here. Um, if you don't know how to draw these lines, uh, it just looks like a random um, cat's cradle. Uh, some of them are as simple as joining highs and lows. You can see back here, uh, July the 7th, uh, the chart high came. This is a 12-day chart, 12 days to one bar. The chart high for that the rally in there uh, came the following week. But this is the momentum high. It's the highest bar. We've got the highest close on it. Uh, and if you simply draw a line from there uh, to this low, which don't forget, this is the 9-11 low, uh, very emotional and very important to market. Uh, if you drew a line uh, just to connect those two points, uh, it finished up forecasting the 2002 low um, perfectly. Uh, and uh, that's amazing, is it not? Uh, some of them are a bit more complex than that. Um, I teach this stuff at uh, tutorials. Um, here's the fourth degree line um, uh, running up into the 2007 high. Um, and uh, if you don't can't see that that's quite got it, uh, let me just change this chart. Remember we said bar high low or close only. There's the close only chart uh, and there is the uh, exact high uh, in there. So uh, this stuff is pretty close to perfect. Um, occasionally markets will overshoot it and come back uh, and as we move on uh, then this stuff starts to get really complex because uh, this is a current uh, fourth seal chart. Now don't get frightened and freak out. Uh, we do this for you. This stuff is very, very time consuming uh, and you have to maintain a massive number of charts to, to, to see all the different time frames. Uh, but uh, that's what the fourth seal service is, uh, that we do this stuff for you and show you the most current positions. But I just simply want to point out to you that uh, from that high, which we had uh, pretty well to the tick on the close, uh, here was the uh, fourth seal going down at the March 2009 low, uh, and we had multiple, multiple time cycles expiring then, uh, and uh, that's what enabled me to call that low to the uh, day and a couple of ticks. Um, and if you'd like to know more about that in real time detail, go and read the article under the articles tab that I wrote, and it's called The Number of the Beast. Uh, and if you don't know the number of the beast, it's 666. Uh, and if you look at the low of that uh, that bar uh, in March 2009, uh, the low on the index was 666.79, uh, and we knew that was going to happen, um, or we had, thought it was going to happen with a high level of probability many months before, um, and there's... Uh, it was a webinar that I was running in TAP at the time, so we had plenty of people who were there, and... Uh, saw us buying the low on the Monday morning. Uh, all you need to know about this, I've just put this on here to show you, um, as you run out of this uh, 2009 low, uh, there was the rally high. Um, it caught the um, fourth seal uh, coming down perfectly. Uh, then it uh, went down. It sat on the uh, one standard deviation of our uh, Daniel Code trading channel. Uh, 
um, uh, then up it goes and it, it came into this uh, crosshairs here uh, where you had uh, two fourth some of these incidentally might be fifth seal when I say fourth seal just bear in mind there's a fourth seal and a fifth seal which is a cousin uh, of the fourth seal it has slightly different rules as to how you create it uh, down it went um, uh, caught uh, this uh, this um, uh, fourth seal line here which was actually um, uh, doing something else entirely uh, it was finding this high here but look what happens it bounces off there and it finds the Daniel code trading channel up it goes finds another four seal line down it comes to the, the Daniel code trading channel up it goes to the next uh, uh, fourth seal number gets it on the close not the high uh, both are valid down it goes find support etc etc uh, up into here and you can see that Almost every significant turn uh, has been forecast by this uh, amazing tool. Um, there's our 12 day. Let us move quickly now uh, to our 6 day because I want you to see this uh, all the way. Uh, this is the uh, Aussie USD uh, and this is a chart that's come from an article I've just written for uh, uh, Forex Journal which is going to be uh, the uh, last date for submitting the um, article was the uh, last week, um, middle, of, middle of this week just gone uh, and this will be published in the July edition of Forex Journal if you can get that magazine uh, you can read all about uh, this Aussie USD uh, trade that's going on and uh, uh, those of you who do follow my articles will know that at, uh, in February of this year for that same publication uh, I was asked to forecast what were going to be the most interesting markets for 2013 and I said uh, I was a contrarian and this Australian dollar pair against not only the USD but the Japanese yen and the euro uh, was, was going to be a uh, pretty exciting market to be short um, and that's come to pass. Um, the point I want to show you here uh, it's the same thing we've been talking about this is where the uh, time count starts on this chart uh, there you get the 59 didn't give us anything really except a little counter trend uh, but then it moves on and here we are uh, at the 148 uh, which is going to be we can click that on for you uh, so you can see how this stuff works um, and that's one and a half times remember it is for time times and and half here's one and a half and this is a really interesting chart for this reason that uh, right here uh, was the momentum high in May 2011 uh, and you'll see the fourth seal line going up here uh, and it had forecast that uh, and uh, I thought that that was probably going to be the high but there was one problem with it it doesn't didn't have a Daniel code time cycle expiring there <laughs> um, so it was um, uh, it was a valid uh, uh, fourth seal line or fourth fourth degree I should call it it doesn't become the fourth seal until it also has time expiring because it's that conjunction uh, of time a Daniel code time cycle uh, and the uh, red line as it's shown here uh, when price meets all of those things together um, uh, then we say that we've had a conjunction of time and price and we call that time and price squared uh, and when time and price are squared a turn is almost inevitable uh, and at this point here where I have the cursor at the moment time and price were not squared we had um, <coughs> we had a um, uh, a, a nice hit against the uh, the red line but I mean we've had that before um, here these things act as support and resistance here it's acting as support uh, here it acts as support on a closing basis if you change this into a close only chart you see this bar of uh, 02 2010 close right on there uh, rallied up breaks down comes up hits it here hits it here uh, bumps its head a few times underneath it here and runs up and we get price uh, going to the Daniel code red line but we don't have time so it's not time and price squared in other words it's not a valid fourth seal juncture um, so we made that high looked pretty exciting at the time uh, and we got a uh, shallow rally and then it made this crazy bar here uh, and you see this on charts all the time this one bar that will flick back and take out all the stops uh, you see this on daily time frames, weekly, monthly, everything. Uh, and you probably say to yourself um, a rude word. Um, and thereafter you say, why did this happen? 
Um, and the truth is that the uh, market has been waiting on time. It couldn't complete that move until it got to the Daniel Code time cycle. Um, and uh, there you can see why markets do these things. They appear uh, to the uninitiated as just irrational, uh, annoying. Uh, someone would say, oh, they're just running the stops. <coughs> the market had to go there because it hadn't completed its rally until it found time and price squared. Um, and markets do this all the time. Uh, do they do it exclusively? Is this the only way a top can come in? Uh, the answer to that is yes, uh, but I have to tell you in frankness that we don't always see it uh, at the time. <coughs> um, we, get, we get most of them. We've got a, a pretty high strike rate, um, and um, we don't miss many, but you, you know, we're monitoring uh, daily charts, six-day charts, 12-day charts, 24-day charts, um, across 30-odd uh, markets, essentially, um, eight or nine of which we, we're actually showing to you on the fourth seal. Um, so then this market ran down, and uh, where would it go? Uh, here's your uh, Daniel Code trading channel. It broke through the first uh, standard deviation. The next point it goes to is the second standard deviation, and there it is. Um, now, from here, uh, I expect it to rally and then uh, go a lot further. It's got a date. Uh, with this red line uh, further out towards the end of the year. Um, and if you uh, see that article in Forex Journal, uh, when it's published, uh, you'll be able to see exactly where that is. <coughs> uh, and if you can't get Forex Journal, uh, Terry will post that article uh, on the website here uh, when that article um, has been published. Um, uh, so that was uh, uh, the Aussie US. I wanted to show you how Important it is that we get this conjunction of time and price uh, so that we get time and price squared. Um, here's the uh, uh, S&P on the 12-day chart. Um, I wanted to, oh, this is a, a slightly uh, different variant of the same thing I was talking to you about. Um, here, here's our 59 cycle uh, starting here, and it went in and it gave us the closing high uh, of the 2007 top. Um, and from there, here's the fourth seal line uh, that ran down. Um, and it's not much more complex, this one. Uh, if you look at it and say it, it, it clicked the low of this bar here and just joined the high to that low, uh, you'd be right. It's actually more complex than that. But you can see that's quite a, an interesting point. And it gives us two lows. There's the low uh, of the momentum low. Um, and there's the low of the chart low, and they're both right on the um, a fourth seal line, which is how I had that price target. Uh, from this high, this was a, a crash high. They're pretty unusual. Uh, when you get 59 on the first hop, uh, and this is the first hop. This was this little high here that we used uh, before this last correction. Uh, 59 on the first hop, that means it has to be time not times uh, for, for the crash cycle. That was the crash cycle. It's pretty rare, um, and we knew this was going to be dramatic. It didn't look it for a long time uh, through here. Um, Tony UK, uh, who used to be an Elliott Wave guy, says uh, all of these things start off as threes uh, before they get sick of it and develop into fives or six, sevens, nines, whatever. And, but uh, I can remember this was uh, just hanging around and hanging around, and we expected it to be much more dramatic. Well. It became dramatic uh, in due course. Uh, but from that 59 to there, this was 59 as well. It's shown on here as 118. That's actually twice 59 uh, because it's counting from uh, back here uh, where we started the time count uh, in um, May 2006. So 59 into high, then another 59 into low. Okay. Now, you've all seen this. I've talked about this so often. I've written about it. You're probably all sick to death of it. But look what happens over here at this last high we got. It's 4.59. That's 4 times 59 from the 2009 low and 5 times, <coughs> excuse me, um, let's see where it is. Uh, I want to make this clear to you. I'll just tighten this up a bit so it's a bit more obvious. See if we can get this all on one page. Okay, so... Here's the start of our time cycle. It's 159s into the high. The second 59 gives you the low. And look where we are now with four. Um, so we've got, um, 
to put this on so it counts. Okay, you can see this count. I'll switch on the count for you. Uh, and here we are. There's, there's the 59 once. There's times and and half. Uh, there's that, that's actually going to be two. The count is less because it doesn't count the first one. Uh, and here you are now out here. Uh, that's actually three 59s from the low, four 59s uh, from here, uh, and five 59s uh, from back here. So this market has been running on this DC 59 cycle. Um, I showed you way back to 1994, but you can see how it just goes on and on and on. Um, and I mean, you can't fake this stuff. Um, uh, it either is or it isn't, uh, and it's really quite extraordinary. Um, let me move on. Uh, excuse me rushing today, folks. This is faster than we normally go, but we're 45 minutes into it, and I've got much, much more to show you. Um, I suggest that uh, uh, what we'll probably have to do, um, I didn't uh, want to run past there. Um, I think what we'll probably have to do is um, uh, follow this up um, a bit later on with another one of these uh, fourth seal type um, uh, webinars because I'm just not going to have enough time today. Uh, I know it's Friday night where you folks are and uh, I uh, appreciate you uh, turning up, uh, but maybe uh, you don't want to be here too long tonight. You want to go and have a drink or be with your family or whatever. But this stuff is so incredible um, that, you, I mean, you can't make it up. It's just so extraordinary. Um, and uh, you just see these time cycles uh, repeating again and again and again. Uh, and you see these fourth, uh, fourth sealed uh, time cycles repeating again and again and when you get the conjunction uh, when you get the red line and you get an expiring Daniel code time cycle you get time and price squared <coughs> in which case <coughs> excuse me a turn is almost inevitable uh, so we've looked at the uh, uh, really long-term stuff um, we've looked at the six day and you can see uh, it just keeps on moving up and up and up through this uh, Daniel code trading channel it's been following that since the March 2009 low. Um, and if you haven't already recognized it, markets find it very, very hard to close above um, the Daniel Code trading channel. Uh, and this market here broke through it. You immediately got a correction. Uh, it broke through it again here. We're up to uh, February 2011. Uh, you got a little four bar correction. For those who didn't know, they pushed it up again. Um, listening to uh, commentators who don't understand how mathematical markets are uh, and they everyone got whacked down it came where'd it go to the mean the thicker blue line is the mean or the median of the Daniel Code trading channel rallied four bars and then straight down broke through the first uh, standard deviation where did it find its bottom exactly at the second standard deviation I mean this stuff is just mathematically precise um, and this uh, analytical stuff on the longer term is just absolutely amazing, wonderful. Um, I've been doing this for, uh, I've had the Daniel Code in one form or another uh, for about 18 or 20 years. Um, and uh, I didn't uh, sort of really uh, get it falling out uh, until about six or seven, eight years ago, I suppose now. Uh, but it is extraordinary. I've lived with this for um, a third of my life. And I can promise you no one is more surprised about this stuff uh, than I am, um, and it's all come out of uh, the book of Daniel written 2,600 years ago, um, been sitting there in plain sight and nobody uh, has ever got to understand it. And I can't really tell you uh, how I got to understand it. Um, if I say it was revealed to me, uh, most of you will go, oh, geez, turn it up. Uh, but that's the truth. Um, you can read uh, uh, the, uh, the book of Daniel. Um, uh, and uh, read chapter 12, which is where this stuff comes from. Uh, and I don't think anyone will ever have the insights into how these numbers came that I had. Uh, but if you listen to that audio live at the Springs, uh, you'll get them all, um, all the time. Okay, now let's move on because uh, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I wanted to, while I'm still on this set of charts, uh, take you and show you uh, just a couple of things. Now, first of all, uh, I wanted to just refresh your memory, those of you who don't always attend these webinars. 
Uh, remember that these Daniel Code trading signals uh, have different times of validity, but often I'm a day early with them. Um, it, this is the only signals I've ever seen that come early. Uh, so, you know, write the signals down. I'm going to just show you a few of them uh, from this week. Um, write them down and uh, look at your uh, chart. Uh, and if you can support it, be prepared to carry that trade forward uh, one day uh, because they do come early. I'm going to show you a bunch of them. Uh, this is bonds. Incidentally, this was a, um, a C, a continuation sell uh, that I posted for June the 17th. Um, there's uh, June the 14th, uh, there's June the 17th, the Monday, um, and this was a, um, a plus signal. For those of you who are not getting uh, all of the signals, for the TO3s you only get signals that set up a certain way. They're very, very good. They're our oldest product. Uh, they've been uh, running profitably. They're, they're, they're optimized for defense, um, and they've been running at between uh, 4 and 6% uh, a month. Uh, for the last six or seven years. Uh, the plus signals uh, give you another range of signals. So um, some of you who are not getting them, uh, you might want to upgrade or ask Terry for a trial so you can look at them. Um, this is a C or continuation signal, which means that uh, you uh, sold the market uh, here, uh, two ticks below this bar, which was the 14th, and you did that on the 17th, uh, and you use a two-bar trailing stop until the uh, market gets oversold, which it is now on our proprietary 533 Daniel Code Stochastic, uh, and then you move to a one-bar trading stop. Uh, that trade's worth over $5,000 per one contract. <laughs> um, and, you know, if you're not getting this money, um, you should be. Um, uh, it's very, very inexpensive, um, our fees, um, and uh, you can just uh, usually get all your money back in one or two trades. Um, Here's one. Uh, have a look at this. This is US dollar CAD, um, and we had a uh, buy signal for that uh, posted uh, for the 17th. Well, there was the 14th. There's the cursor. Um, uh, here's the 17th. You have to buy that uh, a couple of ticks above, uh, and the same thing. Uh, this actually was posted um, as an R reversal signal. Uh, use your own common sense. If you're not comfortable with this stuff, if you're new to this stuff, Stick to the protocols that I tell you, which are on the uh, website. Uh, but once you get a bit more confident about this stuff, don't be frightened uh, if you do nothing else of using a two-bar trailing stop, uh, which becomes a one-bar trailing stop when the market uh, gets overbought or oversold. Um, if you have a look at this, we bought it uh, just in here, five ticks above the high. Uh, and this is set for some reason at a dollar a tick, a bit less. Uh, it's actually worth about $10 a, a tick. Um, plus or minus, it varies, uh, but it's around 10 or $11 um, um, a, a tick here. So that's 2,500 um, just from that trade. Let me just really quickly uh, run you through um, a few others uh, that came out in the plus signals. We had a very funny week this week. If you had a look at the signals uh, for June the 18th, uh, we were really, I was really struggling to find a, uh, one or two TO3 signals uh, for you guys who don't get uh, the plus signals, and we had uh, one I managed to find, um, GBP USD. Uh, I found that, uh, that was a sell signal, um, and there it is. Um, uh, this is for the uh, 17th, for the 18th. Uh, there's the 17th, you had to sell it on that day. Uh, one, two, uh, three, four days down, looks pretty good. Uh, it was a TO3 sell, so you got out the first profitable close. Uh, which was at the uh, close of the 18th. But same thing, look how this stochastic's falling down. It's opening up. You could have just used a, uh, a one or two bar trailing stop in here uh, and got a lot more money. So uh, remember that the TO3 trades uh, and these plus signals there all optimized for defense. Uh, but those of you who are comfortable with this stuff, don't be frightened to use a trailing stop and turn them into a C trade. Uh, and do write them down because they're often uh, a day early um, and uh, it's worth uh, hanging on to them for that reason. Um, here's the um, uh, same, same sort of thing. This is another one of these plus trades. Not a lot of you get them. Most of you just get the, the TO3s and I do want to urge you to think about um, uh, getting uh, these plus trades uh, and Terry will give you a trial if you like. 
this was a, a signal for June the 18th. Okay, there's June the 18th, uh, but if you had carried it forward for a day, I know this was Wednesday, this was the Fed day, um, uh, I was reluctant to uh, uh, put on new trades for there, but let me just show you what this is. Um, there is a is 2350 uh, per one contract, um, and we had the same the same trade um, for uh, the Nasdaq. Uh, here it is, same thing. Um, and if you just had written this down and carried it forward one day, uh, there's some more money. Uh, and we had a, another sell. All of these uh, markets, equity markets, had sells on them, uh, and they all came one day um, uh, too early or too late. So look what happens with the lovely trade navigator. Periodically, it has a heart attack, um, and uh, I'll need to close that down now uh, and reopen it. But uh, don't worry, we've got plenty of other stuff to show you, um, and this is a fairly fast computer. So let me get that up again. Um, it just has a little uh, overload. It, it'll give you a signal saying uh, storage space or something is uh, insufficient, but uh, that's not the problem. We've spent months trying to uh, fix it. This, this is a massive machine. Uh, okay, so uh, here it is. We're back now. Uh, make sure I'm showing you the right... Um, there you are. You've got it back now. Okay, here's the... Uh, uh, other one was the um, uh, Russell, uh, uh, and it was a C signal. So do uh, have a look at these additional signals beyond the TO3s, and do be prepared uh, to hold them, for to, to, to write them down, and, and, and keep looking at them for an extra day, uh, because these signals do habitually come early, um, which is really cool, because everyone else's signals come a day late, don't they? Um, and don't be frightened to open your shoulders a little bit, those of you who are comfortable with this stuff, uh, and turn a lot of these uh, R and uh, 3 trades, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, into C trades. It's very, very rewarding. Uh, we're nearly uh, out of the first hour of time. Uh, I had told you I want to talk to you very briefly uh, about sugar. Uh, I've got a ton more stuff to talk to you about. I don't think we'll get through it all today. Um, this is the sugar chart, um, and uh, on this day here, which was uh, for March the 12th, we had a TO3 buy signal, uh, and we also had a blue line buy signal. These are the blue line is part of the plus suite of signals. Uh, and they are valid for three days, including the day for which they're posted. So the buy was valid uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, and the problem was that uh, on the day after, on Monday, we had rollover. Um, and uh, I, I, didn't, I can't put these trades up um, in GMAG, and I try not to put them up uh, generally uh, in the uh, trade program because I don't want you guys to get caught um, in this rollover. You don't want to be caught. What you want to do, uh, on trade navigator charts at least, you have this little R uh, down here. Uh, which I'll just move the cursor off it, uh, the letter R in a diamond, uh, and that's telling you when they estimate this, con this market is going to roll to the new contract. Now, we can't put it in, in the uh, GMAG auto trade because it only and always executes uh, in the 057 contract, and uh, when you get this rollover, you get a distortion. The way to handle this is to be out of the expiring contract um, Three days, yeah, I do it. I think it's about optimum uh, before you get the rollover. So uh, rollover was due here uh, on Monday the 17th. Uh, so there's one day, two days, three days. Um, you needed to, if you wanted to execute this trade, you had to go to the front month. And if you hover your cursor over this, uh, you'll see back here. I'm looking up at the top here. Uh, the code is uh, telling you that's the 2013 contract. Uh, shows that, but the at the R, as you get within a few days, it tells you which contract it's going to roll into. This was going to roll into the 2000, uh, into the October contract, um, and this is it here. So if you look at um, the forward month, uh, you can execute this same signal in the forward month, and you bought, uh, it was still valid uh, here, and you bought here uh, just uh, a couple of ticks. Uh, this is a... Uh, Futures two ticks above Thursday's high, uh, and you got this nice run up here. 
Um, you could have just used a two-bar trailing stop into a one-bar trailing stop, uh, or you could have been cognizant that there was a uh, target at uh, 1744, uh, and as it got close to that, you could be uh, winding up your stops or uh, uh, getting your stops a bit closer anyway. Uh, ben, uh, who will be here somewhere, uh, FXFX, um, uh, is uh, kind enough to um, point out. Uh, he, ben, ben is trading. <coughs> He's a very, very good trader. He's done a couple of tutorials with a lovely guy. Uh, lives here in Australia, down uh, south from where I am, Ben. I think you're getting all the rain today. Uh, we had it the last couple of days. It's your way now. But um, Ben points out that you're just not paying enough attention to the charts. Um, I spend um, 60, 70 hours a week creating these charts, um, and I don't do it for fun. I do it um, because it's a vital part of uh, trading. And uh, Ben wrote to me a little note the other day saying, uh, uh, gold weekly update just five dollars off the low great work on the most unused item in the DC world I like the midweek euro GBP chart for the blue line reversal I like it can't understand why your educated DC people bypass the gems in this work uh, from Ben okay so let's have a look at that he's what he's talking about he's got the particular one he's talking about here um, is uh, euro GBP so you just uh, click on the uh, Forex Pairs tab, you get all your charts, there's Euro GBP, um, and uh, we can blow that up. Uh, let us see, is this uh, changing for you guys? Yes, it is. Uh, and uh, we can click on the uh, Maximize button, uh, which will make it easier for you to see it. Uh, and uh, that should be coming up now. Uh, and we'll just bring this down a tab. And this is what Ben's talking about, that uh, we had the buy signal in here, up it went, um, and this was the midweek charts. These charts are published. Um, Forex is published on uh, uh, Monday uh, before the market open, all of them are, and then updated again midweek. Um, so you could see that it was heading up towards the first of the blue line numbers. Um, here's Euro GBP. Um, let's see, in fact, what happened with it uh, as we go back to the other chart. Uh, and there it is, um, 85.91 was the high, uh, the number we were uh, looking for on the blue line chart uh, was 85.94, in other words, three ticks variance and the Daniel Code number caused the turn. Uh, you really need to spend a lot of time uh, looking at these charts uh, which I create for you. Uh, if you have a look at the, uh, we go to miscellaneous, have a look at soybeans, which we were just looking at, sugar rather, uh, which we were just looking at, uh, you'll see you have daily, in here you have daily and weekly charts, um, and if I maximize this, you'll see that uh, the first blue line target uh, for sugar was 1744, uh, and I showed you, uh, did I not, um, LMP sugar, uh, here's the October chart. 1744, this got up to uh, 1741, uh, three ticks away, uh, that's uh, about as thick as a, a, you know, a hair in trading, three ticks would be a pretty good idea to start um, uh, tightening up your stops, um, and then of course if you want to know where it came, was going to go down to, uh, over here we have um, our, our Daniel Code retracement tool, uh, if you're a member of the Daniel Code, um, uh, you'll get this uh, free from... Uh, us, uh, this would be a normal retracement down here, um, and it doesn't get there, but have a look what happens in here, uh, that this is the, this one here is the low before the low, there's the low, there's the low before the low, which you've heard me talk about, uh, and sometimes uh, that is the, that is the uh, uh, range that it will co connect, that, that's a hard one, I didn't, I didn't expect you to get that one. Uh, but you'll see that the Daniel Code black line um, stopped that like a train. Um, oh, there you are. You can see that there. So, I mean, this stuff is uh, incredibly accurate. Um, and um, in my uh, very early on in my trading career, um, I read a lot of rubbish by uh, W.D. Gann. Uh, but one of the things he said that, that stuck with me was use all of your tools all of the time. 
Um, and that's what we're seeing here. You've got the Daniel Code retracement channels, which work on the linear uh, price charts. You've got the uh, fourth and fifth seal, which work on the lateral time charts. They're, they're combining time and price. Uh, and you need to use all of these tools all of the time. And the better you get at this, the more more, more confident you'll be um, about using them. Okay, so folks, uh, it's Friday night there. I'm not going to keep you uh, very late this time. Let me just um, uh, answer some questions. Um, the hour is up, uh, and there are a number of questions. There's a ton of stuff I haven't shown you. I mean, it's just... So much to show you, so much to talk about. Let's uh, just really quickly find a couple of these uh, questions here. Um, single market frack zen. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be really, really something. Let me see if I can blow this up. Uh, I was talking to Spence about this and said, oh, look, Spence, you're right. You can blow it up. Um, and I didn't even need bad. Look, I've got all of your questions. Uh, but I've got a couple of things I want to show you first. Um, let me go to the um, um, uh, the fourth seal and uh, show you uh, just quickly some of these charts. Some of them are small and some of them are uh, are quite big. Um, I'm just going to show you these and you can start thinking about them. Um, here's that, uh, you've seen this in another form. Here's our six-day chart uh, with the fourth seal uh, forecasting the uh, the low there. Um, this one uh, I thought was quite stunning. Um, this is a chart that um, uh, Frank, our friend uh, Frank, did for us, uh, which I showed to a tutorial group uh, the very day of the high. We didn't know that was the high in the DAX just then, uh, but he kindly sent that to show that you had uh, the uh, two Daniel Code time cycles, a 62 and a 59 uh, expiring right at this day. Uh, 3.59s expiring uh, the day before, the, the, the period before, um, and as he says, the high on the first, fifth seal close on the second. And the DAX since then, that gave us time and price squared, uh, and the DAX since then uh, is well down, as you know. Uh, let's just see, um, here's a, a, a smaller chart that shows you, this is bonds, um, and just shows you how markets turn all the time at these, where time and price is squared, you have a fourth or fifth seal line and a Daniel Code time cycle, it turns. Um, and uh, that's what we're trying to uh, show you. Uh, this is um, uh, the S&P. This is straight off the uh, fourth seal. Uh, we had this 59 cycle there, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and time and price. Uh, and that uh, has turned out, of course, to be the high uh, for the moment of the S&P. Here's another uh, chart that Frank sent me today that he's added to it. Um, there was the little counter trend with the outside bar. Two Daniel Code time cycles forced it down. <coughs> and it's now got support uh, with a 44, a 93, and 118. Um, I mean, I honestly don't know how you guys uh, trade without this stuff. Um, it's taken uh, 20 years for me to get it to the stage that it's uh, good enough for you to see and to release it to you. Uh, but if uh, we can forecast with a very, very high degree of probability uh, where these market turns are going to be, and you don't want to know about them, uh, then I honestly don't know why you're trading. Um, uh, don't forget uh, with these that, uh, excuse me, um, where's the next one? I was going to tell you something. Um, uh, this is natural gas. Look at this. Uh, there was the high, runs down to the 62, back up to the 89. Remember I told you time is more important than price. It's stronger. Uh, here's this little uh, counter trend low here, and it rallies back up uh, two periods. Based solely, that wasn't a four seal turn uh, because you didn't have the red line there, uh, but time cycles expiring, turned it, forced it up, hits the red line, down it comes, 59 wasn't at the red line, nothing happened, had to go the extra six days to get itself to the red line and the time cycle and then rally. Um, so I could go on showing you this stuff uh, forever um, and uh, I, wish I, I wish I could, I, I need to spend a lot more time with you. Uh, on this, um, let, me, uh, let me see what else we have here, I have to get on an answer and uh, answer some of these questions. Here's uh, oil. You can see there's a very complex chart, uh, but every single turn has come at a Daniel Code time cycle um, and where it's also got um, uh, 
uh, a, a, a red line. We've had those turns as well. So uh, that's vital stuff, folks, and I don't uh, actually know uh, why you haven't uh, all been using it, probably because it was too expensive, uh, which is why we have bought in this new single uh, product for you. Okay, let's just run through some of these questions here uh, really quickly. Um, Peter, make a four seal high, wouldn't have needed to hit a trend line to square price with time. Yeah, it has and it did. Um, I've actually shown you a few of those, Peter. You should have uh, picked them up by now. Here, here it is. Uh, you're seeing it now. Uh, here is, um, I hope your chart's changed. There it is. Uh, at the high, we had a 59, an 89, a 62, and a 44, all there and at the, uh, at the fourth seal line. Now, uh, what I want to tell you is uh, one of our clients, he's a very, very uh, good uh, trader, uh, super smart guy, um, and uh, he understands this fourth seal, I think, better than anyone else I've ever taught it to, uh, and that's our friend Frank, who's uh, uh, a lot of the tutorial people know. Uh, Frank's asleep now. He lives in Belgium. It's the middle of the a very cold night over there. Uh, but uh, what he's been doing, once you get these markets locked into these Daniel Code fourth seal numbers, uh, and these will come out weeks and weeks before it gets there. So, you know, you can have two, three, four weeks sometimes, a couple of weeks at least, uh, and it takes the continuation of the trend before the turn from about a 55% chance up into the high 80s. Uh, so once you see these things approaching their uh, time and price cycles for the turn, the trend becomes very dominant. And what uh, Frank has been doing is he's been weighting his trades in accordance with that bias. In other words, uh, if the market's going up, like for this period here that we saw the last uh, three periods going up into the projected Daniel Code time and price turn, he's been adding 25, 27, 30 percent to his long trades, adding a bit of risk. Um, and same here, once you get the turn, he's been weighting his trades to take more on the downside than the upside. Uh, and he doubled his account between December and March, uh, which wasn't um, a great time for trading, uh, and he's doubled it again since then. So uh, that's what's possible with this. We'll talk a lot more about that uh, in a couple of weeks. Frank's going to uh, uh, come and do one of these uh, webinars with me, and we'll be able to talk about all the other uses you can do with this stuff. But uh, it's vital if you're not getting it. Uh, I don't uh, know why. Uh, Peter, uh, uh, Michael Peel, uh, free to extend. You can show your charts in gold. Um, you can. Uh, let's show you what we're uh, saying about gold. Um, uh, everyone wants to know about gold. Uh, I know you, a lot of you guys uh, love it, but I, I can tell you it's um, uh, one of the worst trading markets that we have um, Bear with me while this takes a moment to uh, open. Okay, here's the uh, here's the fourth seal. Uh, this is all of them. There's the S and P. Uh, you can see what I've been showing you. Does that come up for you again? Yes, it has. Um, there's the DAX. Uh, we had a big, big issue on the DAX. Uh, um, forecasting this uh, this high back uh, uh, here uh, weeks before it started. Dollar index, here's the gold chart. Um, uh, and this is the uh, uh, six day chart. Um, and you can see that uh, it came down, uh, it found it 62 and it's 59, it found a Daniel Code black line. Uh, it actually shot through there with the momentum uh, of that crash. Uh, but uh, that provided the support, and it hit a fourth seal line exactly, and I mean exactly, on the and at 62, which is our support cycle, and a 59. From there, it rallied, uh, and now uh, it's going to find this is a 44 and a 62 uh, under here, and uh, uh, this is uh, this is the comment with it uh, before the weekend. It'll be updated, of course, on Monday. Um, another 59 cycle coming up next DC week suggests another top is coming. Uh, so that's uh, pretty wild, isn't it? Um, and uh, the only way you can see that stuff, of course, is with this uh, 
at the fourth seal stuff. Um, let's move on. Um, uh, why bother practicing law then? Uh, oh, don't practice family law, James. Uh, I practiced law for uh, uh, 30 years or so, but it's a long time since I practiced law, I can assure you. Uh, rally uh, in the Aussie USD pair. Um, yes, Pete, thank you, that's right. Um, uh, Um, Rob H, um, good question. As the fourth seal line can find the low or high momentum, why use a TO3 entry pips above or below the prior high or low, i.e. the fourth seal appears to be more precise? Thanks. Uh, yes, it is, but don't forget in the fourth seal, uh, you're looking primarily at six-day charts, and we stress uh, in this page here uh, that you must not anticipate these trades. Uh, you must wait for a valid Daniel Code turn signal. Uh, which will be a TO3 or a plus signal in the time frame and very, very close. You'll see uh, on this uh, page here, uh, we actually give you the prices uh, at which the four seal line will be uh, and you must wait to get pulled into the trade. Do not uh, anticipate them. Um, uh, Eddie, yes, uh, is it better to close the current month contract then re-enter manually? Yes, that's that's one of the limitations, Eddie, with the auto trade. Um, you have to you have to enter that trade manually. The auto trade won't run it. Um, uh, is seventy four a DC time count? Absolutely, uh, and seventy is uh, is a m very minor one, uh, Philip. Seventy is what we call the heathen cycle. Um, uh, it, it, it doesn't come off the uh, prime Daniel Code ratios. <coughs> 74 does, um, uh, and 70 is one of the subsidiary ratios, which is why we call it the heathen cycle, not meaning it's anything bad about it, but simply that it doesn't comply with most of the uh, normal Daniel Code ratios. Uh, and the 70, incidentally, Philip, is very dominant in the euro. Uh, you'll see that. Uh, here's a question from uh, Pat. Do we show... Uh, uh, how the charts continue in the future so you can see the trends. Well, yes, you will on the weekly charts, uh, Pat, that's right. Um, uh, Pat, uh, have tried ha Terry, haven't tried, haven't heard back. Is he extremely busy? Look, he is at the moment, Pat, uh, but uh, I know he's on uh, Skype somewhere here. So, Pat, uh, Terry, get on to Pat, uh, please, and uh, respond to her. He has been very busy. Uh, we've, he's been working very hard trying to get the website to <coughs> allow you to have the single markets, and that's create had to be a lot of building in the website. Uh, to, so instead of just uh, uh, seeing them all on one sheet, you can see them in their different uh, slots, and you can just uh, subscribe for one or two of them. Uh, that's taken an age, and we've got uh, uh, the Frac Zen, uh, which I'm not talking about today. That's our new short-term trading program. Uh, that's going to be released in two weeks, uh, and we're uh, pretty involved in uh, testing that and what have you. Um, what else have we got? Um, uh, here's Ben FX, my mate here. Uh, this week's weekly update got to within $5 of the smash low uh, on the gold blue line from the chart. Uh, you've got to just, uh, you've just got to uh, spend as much time as you can. Look, I spend, it probably takes me close to 70 hours a week to create these charts, uh, which is probably more than a working week for, for most people and, uh, um, um, you know, 70% of my working week. So uh, I don't know. I find them absolutely indispensable. I couldn't trade without them. Uh, Ben's telling you of the trading opportunities uh, that he's got um, uh, from using the charts. And you guys should be all over these charts because... Uh, if I tell you that no market will turn without being at a Daniel Code number, um, uh, you just don't use it, but that's a fact. And if you roll up to the top of the website, uh, which I'm uh, trying to show you now, uh, there is a tab up here which says um, Chart Archives. Uh, can you see that? Has this changed yet? Uh, let me see if I can get it to change. There it is. Um, it's in gold uh, up here. It says Chart Archives. And there are thousands, and I do mean thousands, of my charts in there. Um, and um, um, if you look at those, you, it takes a long time to open. 
because it's such a huge file. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you go through all those thousands of charts, uh, you will find that uh, it's almost impossible to find a market term that doesn't happen at a Daniel Code number. Uh, and where it does, it's because uh, uh, it's moved to a slightly different time frame. But 99% of those charts all turn at the Daniel Code number. So if I tell you that markets are not going to turn without being at a Daniel Code number, you may start to realize um, just how important these uh, uh, members' charts are. Um, where are we up to? Uh, Mary, uh, am I coming to you? Yeah, Mary, I'll, I'll be there the first week in July, I think. Uh, uh, Shift was, I don't know where you, what your mate was doing the other night. Uh, Shift was trying to get hold of her on Skype. Um, and uh, she said she was out drinking margaritas with a friend. Um, and Shift said he didn't hear any more from her. So uh, it was all very strange. Uh, there's my friend Dex. Gosh, I haven't seen you for a while, Dex. Um, heathen cycle's good for the euro since... Europeans are losing faith in Christ. Look, I don't know about that, mate, but um, you're a good uh, good Jewish boy and a brilliant mathematician. I know that you understand this stuff very, very well. Really nice to hear from you. Uh, that's great. Uh, oh, Lockie, you're going to see the Lions. Uh, don't forget, um, the All Blacks are playing uh, France in the, uh, in the third test uh, as well. Uh, absolutely great. Marvellous rugby. Um, those of you who are not, uh, don't follow the rugby, you're probably missing out on a great thing, but it's a, a, a great feast of rugby uh, going on at the moment. The Lions of the British and Irish Lions. This is Rugby Union. Uh, incidentally, there is another game that goes by a similar name that we, we rather not even speak about. Uh, but uh, the British uh, Lions are, uh, British and Irish Lions are the uh, uh, England, Scotland, Ireland, uh, Wales, uh, and they're playing Australia uh, tonight, which should be a cracker. Um, and the All Blacks have already played two tests. All Blacks are the New Zealand rugby team, best in the world, um, and they've had the two tests against the French uh, down here in New Zealand, uh, and they're playing as well. Uh, Michael, not clear on the meaning of the 44, 62, and 70 timelines. What is their basic meaning? Go and listen, Michael, to that uh, audio live at the Springs. Um, it tells you exactly how those numbers arise. Uh, and what is their meaning? They are uh, Daniel Code Time Slide. And read the articles. There are two of them. They're both called Masterclass. Uh, one's called Masterclass. It's about time. The other's called Masterclass Timing Gold. Uh, read those, and you will understand all about it. OK, was this record tonight, Spike? Yes, it was. Um, I've got through about half what I want to tell you, but our time is up. Uh, we've gone almost for an hour and a half. Um, Oh, that is Spike. Spike, Spike, yes. Um, okay, Mary, I'm glad you enjoyed it, darling. Uh, thank you, folks, for your attendance tonight uh, on a Friday night for you people and Saturday morning uh, for us down under. So it's uh, great that you gave up your uh, time to be here. Eddie, uh, a pre pleasure as always. Uh, uh, lots of people have enjoyed this. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. I look forward to the weekend. Um, and, uh, guys, thanks for your attendance. Um, We'll do another one of these uh, as soon as I get some time, probably in uh, 10 days or so. You'll have a cold one, all right. It's Saturday here, the sun's shining. Uh, shift, big headache on Friday. Oh, mate, I thought you were pretty abstemious, very abstemious. Did, uh, did Fluffy Cups ever get back to you, mate? Uh, she's over here saying thanks, John, but she's not saying anything about uh, who she was drinking margaritas with on Thursday night. Um, so Fluff, apparently, Shift knows stuff about you, uh, I'd like to know too. Good, Nancy. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Blessings to you, darling. All right, folks, uh, I'm off uh, and uh, thanks for your time. Uh, we'll do the other half of this in about 10 days. I'll go over this stuff again. Uh, it is recorded. You will be able to uh, see it. Um, and uh, uh, please remind everybody about the tutorial in December. That's, uh, uh, that's uh, Sage in New Zealand. Yep. Uh, we're going to be having a tutorial. We may have one in Colorado Springs in September. I don't know about that. Uh, but we're definitely going to be having one in Waiheke Island uh, on the first week of December. And that's an island in the Hauraki Gulf, <laughs> uh, not far from Auckland. Um, it's absolutely beautiful, lovely vineyard. Uh, going to be a great crew there. And, of course, that's uh, uh, the start of summer. That's uh, a beautiful time of the year down uh, under in New Zealand. So... Uh, get away from the winter and uh, come on down um, and um, uh, we'll uh, really have a great crowd there. That'll be a, a pretty exciting one. Uh, Michael, yes, I'll see if we if we have enough people to do Colorado as well. 
uh, I'll certainly do that. But um, Waiheke Island, New Zealand in December, the first week of its summer. Uh, we'll take you out fishing and snorkeling and everything else, and uh, uh, it's great. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for your attendance, and uh, uh, good night to you, <coughs> and uh, uh, good, good afternoon to um, our, our local uh, uh, Down Under folks. All right. Oh, Fluffy, you're, you're alive. You better call Shifty was uh, uh, sort of worried about you or interested at least. One of the two, maybe both. Who knows? All right, guys. Thanks for your attendance. We'll, we'll talk again in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.